Welcome back to Extra Help with Mr. A. And today we are going to be looking at the fascinating and incredibly interesting world of 3D measurement. We're going to be talking about volume. We're going to be talking about surface area. And that's about it. Uh, in this video, you will even see me very poorly try to hide a, calculator, a calculation error that I made um, because I was adding in my head instead of showing my work. So stay tuned for that. And stay tuned for all the fun as we look at 3D measurement. So what we have here is a rectangular prism. Uh, it's got three different side lengths. Uh, this side length right here is three units. This side length right here is four units. And this one, the longest one, is seven units. When we're doing 3D measurement, um, the best thing that I can recommend you do is identify which side is which. So you're going to give each of these lines a name. Um, you can use base, height, and length. Um, those, those work absolutely fine. You could also try length with height. Uh, no problem with that either. It doesn't really matter which line you choose for each variable, so for each of these things, it doesn't really matter which which uh, side length you choose. What matters is as long when you pick one, you keep consistent with it. So you always use that one as that variable. So for example, um, I'm going to identify the base as three units. I don't have to use three units. I could have used four. I could have used seven. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to choose that just because. So I'm going to make that three units. Um, the height uh, I'm going to use as this one, seven units. And the length I'm going to use as four units. Now, um, now that I've identified my base height and length, I can't change those values around anymore. I've basically set it in stone this is what those values are for this figure. So first thing I'm going to take a look at is the volume. And the volume is the amount of space this thing takes up. We measure area in units squared because it covers a flat surface. Um, when we use when we measure volume, we you measure it in units cubed, which is a three-dimensional um, value. So the way we calculate volume for a rectangular prism is base times height times length. Um, if you choose to use length, width, and height, it would just be those values um, multiplied together. Okay. In this case, um, I've already identified my base with height and length up here. And that's one reason why this is really effective. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to substitute these values in for these variables. So instead of B, I'm going to write three units because that's my base length. Um, my height, I'm going to substitute with seven units. And my length, I'm going to substitute with four units. Okay, and there's one step in showing my work. Uh, next, I'm going to multiply those values together. Now, you can use a calculator if you need to for this. Um, what I try to do is I simplify it a little bit. So what I'm going to do first I'm going to, is I'm going to multiply 3 times 7. That's going to give me 21 square units. 21 units squared times 4 units. And 21 times 4. Well, if you can't do that in your head, try doing 20 times 4, which is 80, plus 1 times 4, which is 4. So 80 plus 4 would be, of course, 84 units cubed. And that's how we get the volume. So um, notice that units times units gives us units squared. Units times units times units gives us units cubed. Uh, the squared has a 2 as the exponent. The cubed has a 3 as the exponent. Now we're going to take a look at surface area. So now let's talk about surface area. And surface area is something that people have a lot of trouble with. Um, the main thing to remember about surface area is that it is the combined area of all the surfaces. So the clue is in the title. Um, 
basically all you need to do is find the area of each rectangle that makes up the rectangular prism and then add them together. It's really quite simple. So the way we get the area of a rectangle is we multiply one dimension against the other one or with the other one. So um, generally what we do is base times height. Okay? But what that really means is you multiply one side of the rectangle uh, with the other side of the rectangle and that will give you the area. Doesn't matter what you call them, that's just how you get the area. Um, so let's take a look at our rectangular prism here. And as we mentioned, we have three distinct sides that are different from each other. We've got our base length and height. And each rectangle on this um, rectangular prism is going to be a different combination of those dimensions. For example, the area of the front right here, we'll call this the front, we'll call it this one the top, we'll call this the right side. Okay, the area of the front rectangle, so ignore everything else, just this rectangle right here, is going to be this side, which is our base, times this side, which is our length. So the area for this one will be base times length. The area of our top will be this line, which is our height, times this line, which is our length. So the area of the top is length times height. And then the area of our right side will be this dimension multiplied with this dimension. So this dimension is our base, this dimension is our height, so this one will be base times height. Okay, so those are three distinct rectangles and their areas are found by multiplying uh, those three distinct um, dimensions in different ways. So let's take a look at our front. So I'll put area with a little f to be the front. Um, that's going to equal base times length, okay, which is equal to three units times four units. And that will give us 12 units squared, because it's just units by units. Now, we can save ourselves, uh, save ourselves a little bit of work here, because there's a back to this prism, and the back is going to be congruent with the front. So actually, for the area of the back, all we have to do is just make it equivalent to the front. So the area of the back is the same thing as the area of the front. Okay, so area of the back equals area of the front, which equals 12 units squared. Okay, so now we've got our front and back taken care of. Let's take a, let's take care of our top and bottom. Uh, area of the top equals length times height, which equals okay our length is four units times, and our height is seven units. So four units times seven units. And that will equal 28 square units. The area of the bottom is going to be equal to the area of the top. I'm just going to put area A, B, O for bottom because uh, you don't want to confuse that with the back. So A, B, O equals area of the top or A, T. Okay? And that's going to equal 28 units squared as well. Now, since there are six rectangles that make up a three-dimensional rectangular prism, we've taken care of four of them already. There's only two left, and that's the area of the right side and the area of the left side. So the area of the right side is the same thing as saying base times height. Because again, this is our base, that's our height. Uh, that's just how we labeled them in, in, when we made the diagram. So the area of the right equals uh, B times H, base times height, which equals 3 units times 7 units, which equals 21 square units. And the area of the left side is the same thing as the area of the right side. 
So that also equals 21 squared units. Now, some people will say, okay, I'm done. I've calculated the surface area. That's it. Uh, no, because surface area is the combined area of all the surfaces. What we need to do is we need to add these up. Um, and I've already done it. Um, it's actually 122 square units. I had a little bit of an error earlier, so I edited it out. So hopefully you don't uh, mind a little bit of, uh, I guess, technological wizardry as I edit my calculation errors. Um, so essentially when you're calculating surface area, you just calculate the different areas of all the different surfaces of the uh, prism. When you're calculating volume, uh, all you need to do is multiply those three dimensions um, with each other and that will give you the volume in units cubed. Thanks very much and have a great day. 6, 8, 10, 12. So we're left with 122. I think I wrote 102 before that was an error. So it's a good thing I checked my work. Um, and now uh, that's my surface area. My surface area is 122 square units. Okay, so um, that should give you a good idea of how to calculate surface area.